Point. Yeah. You were making a really good point earlier. Was the, the, our archetypical characters like in horror films? In horror films, that's yeah. that's that's most films were like that, and that's why noir was such a great fucking thing. Still is because it was they were taking archetypical characters and flipping them, yeah, and putting them in shitty situations. Yeah, and that's what's interesting about that shit. And, and so, yeah. old horror was like not great like it's fun there's a few the ones that are talked about are the good ones like the ones like if you look at frankenstein like that movie's like if you're like a cinema person there's like a lot that but movie that still does from right literature i'm talking yes, about yeah, yeah. i'm talking about, talking just, about like the just, 60s well no pre-60s where you just take a fucking somebody sits down and goes oh uh, let's have a monster get woken up by a nuclear test because that was a big that's like the thing. atomic age shit that's like the 50s right yeah that but was when it was big monsters the, uh, all late 40s, yeah it was the same fucking thing where the crab there was one about the there's like the crab monster one that's like really stupid yeah there's well, like a bunch of those yeah so, but, corman films hey <laughs> Sorry, it's fucking cinephile talk right now. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to Millennial Stoner. It's me, Joe Winchell. I am the Millennial Stoner. Uh, I have with me, for this week, returning friend. Haven't had him on in a little bit. Last time I called him Professor Andy. Today, he's just Andy. Because <laughs> I, I, was, I was trying had, too hard back I had then. I really, had a really inappropriate relationship with the student. Yes, his license has been revoked. So, no longer. <laughs> but Andy Plagenos is here, ladies and gentlemen. No applause. Ah. One of these days, I'll get sound cues. How you doing, man? Great. Yeah, thanks for coming down. Yeah, no, and, and now it is down. Yeah. It's what? <laughs> well, we went there in the basement. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're in a new location. That's right. We're in, this is the new, this Sweet. is Chris's new spot, our new little... Fucking beautiful. It is. It's really awesome. We can smoke in here. That's great. So that's a big plus. Um, thanks that. for coming in, man. We were just talking about... Um, I don't know, we were talking about, like, just kind of movies in general, yeah, but, like, the state... Think, really, we were kind of commenting on the state of... I think the meta... Uh, conversation was about um, people who hate on shit. Yeah, but that's what it is. We live in a culture of people who hate on shit. Right. Well, that's college, what it is. College, when you're in college, you don't fucking write an essay that, like, agrees with shit. Yeah. It's hard. That's a hard, like, oh, you have to write a five-page paper. Yeah, you're supposed to, like, question shit, right? You can't, you can't write a five-page paper on some shit if you agree with it. Because yeah. you're just going, yeah, here and here's this thing. You have to, at some point take issue with a you know and sometimes it's a minutia kind of fucking thing and, yeah and it's that I, I took a class i think i told you a while back i had taken a class uh novels to film at stony brook what yeah what was that yeah i remember you told so me that. it was a, it was over the summer it was a five-week course where we what do they how do they te what are they teaching exactly well you, criticism it was it was oh it's film criticism so okay. so so you and you need two things to compare to so what they had us do was Either read novels, novellas, uh, short stories, songs mm -hmm. that different movies or short films were based on. And so we read the thing and then we watched the thing. Uh -huh. And then we had to write a paper. And it was like two papers a week. It was brutal because you know how everybody is like, uh, well, the book is better than the film. Yeah, everybody says Try that. fucking doing that ten times in five weeks where you're like, yep. Got it. Is, is that like better a, than the fucking film? Yeah. Is that like a true statement? And and like, because I hear, I do hear that a lot. It's not. It's a it's a generalized statement. Yeah. It is generally true. There are situations where somebody has taken the source material and gone in in maybe a different direction. They took maybe some facts from the thing. Yeah. And then they move forward. Yeah, that's with, like Kubrick Shining is a good example of that. Well, I, I, Kubrick Shining, and and a modern one. That's very accessible to everybody. Is the uh, Born Identity? Oh shit! That is a book series. So it's a book series. Robert Ludlum, I believe, and it is great. Like, but what's really funny is I had to read it for an English class at Suffolk, and the uh, the teacher's like, uh, it, 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 she was a little flaky. But you read the fucking book, and you're like, wow, th these spies are using. Um, phones like a motherfucker like he, he had the yeah like and so when they decided to make it uh the modern movie because yeah. there was a uh richard chamberlain played jason Bourne back in the early 80s there's a born there was there... like a two-part miniseries jacqueline smith plays the it's, chick. is it the first book it, yeah or whatever the fuck yes, that yeah. is that first movie is that it's basically a tv version of it's, that no so so here's the thing what when they it? made the modern movie the guy, the director who I cannot remember who it is, but it's Chris, someone... pull this up. I want to see this shit. What is it? What year did it come out? 
Uh, God, it would have to have been the early two thousands. No, that they did. Wait, that was that early? Well, the the when did the Matt Damon movie come out? That's what I'm talking about. The early two thousands. Oh no, I'm talking about the one before that. Nineteen eighty. Nineteen eighty. Born. I want to say eighty eighty one is is when the no, first born. No, 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 not the book. Look up. Yeah. We'll go down to like adaptations. Yeah, there you go. You find that. So, it, but so what the director did for the modern for the Matt Damon one was. He went and read the book, and he wrote out an outline of the, the, the points he wanted to make. The novel has been adapted as The Born Identity in a 1988 television 88. movie starring oh, yeah. Richard Chamberlain and Jacqueline Smith. The story right. was also partially adapted in the 1989, what does that say, Tamal, Tamal language film. Oh, okay, so that's it. Oh, it was also adapted in like Indian. A, an Indian film, yeah. Yeah. So the two, uh, Matt Damon, Frank Capone, but whoever the fucking director was, cool. wrote out an outline of what he wanted, and then he went to like a f- fucking very serious scriptwriter. I cannot remember who that guy is, but he's a fucking killer. And he went, he just gave him the outline and said, "Write me this." And he went through, and so the modern born identity almost has nothing to do with. The only thing it is 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 an assassin who wakes up without, which is a very intriguing concept. Right, it's that's really concept. all you need. Yeah, but there's so many things that technology overcame from the time the books were written. Well, we're, yeah, Maybe it's so were... that the books were written in Tony Gilroy. Is that the writer? That's uh, the screenplay. Yeah. Okay. This, this dude's a fucking serious. So there's probably there's probably Rogue One. He wrote Rogue One. Michael Clayton. <laughs> he wrote Duplicity. Yeah. <laughs> And he's writing, he's a co-writer on Andor. Look at this, but Armageddon, Duplicity, and then Michael Clayton is like, what, Duplicity? Is that the one with fucking Michael Keaton where he clones himself and makes himself... No, it's Damn it, never mind. That, that would only be What's two Duplicity? Michael Keaton. What's Duplicity? Oh, this is, that's Helen Mirren, right? No, Clive Owen. Yeah, Clive Owen and uh, Julia Roberts. Yeah. All right, never mind. I, apparently, I don't know shit. But, but <laughs> this, this dude's a fucking amazing... Uh, uh, Script yeah, writer. I can see that. He only writes like fucking killers. Yeah, Dolores Devil's Claiborne. Advocate. Holy shit! Yeah. So, uh, dude, this dude did Proof of Life, Devil's so, Advocate. So, that, measures. so if you were to watch, if you were to read the book and watch that original miniseries that was on TV, you'd be like, "This isn't that like cell phones cancel half of the shit." Why? Well, because they're, they're always using landlines and shit. They're using landlines, and there's certain tricks you used to be able to do with phones. What do you mean? Uh, just in terms of like French phones, if you press these two things at the same time, then it brings you to an operator or some shit. Yeah, you know. Like, oh yeah, like, like if you tap on the the thing. Yeah, there's a lot of movies like that. So technology has overcome like all of the tricks that Bourne was able to use to get out of these. Yeah, tight in situations. In a pre-cell phone age. Well, but, really, right before a cell phone age. So at you that couldn't point. have it. So the the uh, I don't think Gilroy had read the books. I'm pretty sure the director went to him with these, this outline of plot points that he wanted to make sure were in the 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 movie. Okay. And he wrote a script that that linked all. Because it's this weird shit. because you could argue that like uh, the the substitute they did use. There's a lot of cell phone use in that. The whole right the flip phones. And so I'm sure that was something always, like make sure you know a, a, a note probably would have been. Make sure they use a lot, like like the phones is important. But you just switch it out for cell phones, and you change. That's what, and, uh, and you don't tell it. him what he what they have to do. Just like make sure there's a lot of cell phone burner phones in there. And... Yeah, it's spy shit. That's all it is. Always that's that's the movie that I remember being like, oh, spies always have burnt drug dealers and spies have burner phones. Yeah. Like that's 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 what I mean, he buys. Like, I, but it's so weird because I remember like in one of the movies he like goes and buys one and like uses it on the spot and everything. It's so fucking great. Well. And that's the other thing is, is that your 2002 was when a cell phones in 2002 versus 20 years later. Yeah. Totally different fucking animal. Yeah, exactly. So you, you would have to, if you wanted to fucking make that movie now, you wouldn't be able to use the, the phones the same way. No, you'd have to cut. That's the problem with doing any, and a lot of those movies, movies are like that. Like a lot of heist movies and stuff. It's just like, if you had a cell phone, this whole movie would not be non-existent. Right. You know, if you had, if, if the Godfather would be a completely different movie, if somebody called Sonny right before he got blown away at the fucking toll booth, it's like, you shouldn't go there. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Hey, Luca Brat. Yeah. Luca Brat's dead. We need to, (laughs) where, where, you know, like, where's Luca? Oh, wow. Yeah. If you had text messages in these movies, it would ruin, it'd be 20 minute films. Exactly. Especially because in a movie like Goodfellas, the whole idea is Paulie doesn't believe in phones. So he would get caught like that nowadays. Right. 
So that oh god, like it, 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 it and so in a way, technology ruins a lot of like the interesting things that have happened. Not throughout. stuff that's set in an era. If you set a movie in an era, but like a lot of stuff that gets adapted, I think like people don't take into consider. Like I don't know. There's just strange adaptations. There's certain things people don't take into consideration when they want to do like reboots or updates of certain things, like content wise stuff like that, where it's like, how do you, how do you, like, there's this, this is a whole movie about rotary phones. How are you going to update this? You know, another thing, like content. Like, I remember when they remade Robocop, I was like, why? Right. I mean, I'm like, if you're going to do it, you have to do what the original movie did. The whole point of the original movie was like a fucking satire in the state of the world and everything like right. that. It was. I'd buy that for a it's dollar. Fucking great. <laughs> I fucking love Robocop. Remember when he shot that dude in the dick? Awesome. Well, that's why <laughs> I, one of my uh, high ideas is um, a reboot that it's a uh, Robo Mall Cop. <laughs> Step away from the hot topic. <laughs> Disperse from the food court. No loitering, scum. The mall is closing in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> totally Just start shooting everybody. Still, yeah. uh, you could have sold that movie in the 85. But that's what I mean. They remade it. And I'm like, it's, but you're, because they, they re remade it and it's fine. It's not terrible. Michael Keaton plays a pretty decent bad guy in it. But like, it, it's just like, the, if you had made that movie and like did the satirization of the world and the state of America right. and like how, you know, like Robocop's a brilliant film just because when you look at it, it's just like, yeah, it's just a satire of, you know, it's, Dude, it's, it's, time, it's the not too distant future. And it's, it was Peter Weller. And at that time, Peter Weller was a fucking pimp. Yeah, he was. So it, it was like, wow, Peter Weller's fucking robot. This is going to be yeah, this sick. Was, yeah, Buckaroo Bonanza used to get so much puss. He's dead, Buckaroo dude. Bonsai and the Adventures in the Eighth Dimension. Yeah. John Lithgow is the bad guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's the greatest is he had, Did he have the shitty accent? Yes. Turn your fucking phone off, Andy. Oh, it's Billy Geyer. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> really? Put him on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> he might. Maybe he went to McGuire's. Probably, but uh, which would be good. I hope yeah, he does. Probably. But uh, the um, fuck, what was I saying? Shit. Oh, we were talking but, about like Robocop and shit. Robocop, but there was something past Robocop. There was something past Robocop. You yeah. said Robo Mall Cop. Uh, well, Paul Blart, Robo Mall Cop. Oh that would God, be a great fuck. I think I could sell that. Buck Buck Bonsai, Bonsai gets a lot of pussy. Line. Gets a lot of pussy. Yes. Best line in the movie. Yeah. No matter where you go, there you are. Yeah, I guess Chris is laughing. Because uh, I delivered it exactly like Peter Willard. But they were going to make Willard a did. fucking TV show out of that at one point. No, I know. Jeff Goldblum played one of the he did. one of the crew. He That's one like of those movies that was like so wacky. It's it's a fucking like if you like fucking cult films, check this fucking movie out. Yeah, if you haven't seen if you have yeah. not seen Buckaroo, if you like sci-fi and shit, it's it's out there. But it's a it's a fucking like great watch. You know what? And I think like there's it's like one of those movies that. I feel like anybody who's like a big fanboy these days, if they were to, they didn't know about it and they were were to watch it, they'd claim they watched it forever. No, not, <laughs> they not wouldn't get it. They, they would do that, but it would shatter where they thought things came from. Yeah. Well, you, what do you mean? Because I think they did in that movie a lot of things that sci-fi didn't really do before, and then. Oh, you see that a lot with movies like that. But you see that shit all the fucking time. It, it's weird. You see these weird little ripoffs, and you're like, of movies that were not as successful. Usually, yeah, just concepts. Yeah. Yes, in inside. But of they them. take that, and that's I I hate like this is the one thing about getting older, and and something I always say to you, and I say to people who are even younger, like Dan LaRocco. Yeah. Uh, you are not. None of us are responsible for the sum of fucking pop culture. Now nah. that came before us. Okay. There'll always be more out there. It's it's a wheel. It just keeps rolling right. and the, rolling. The, the, the things keep getting added to it. It's like a, yeah. there's a there's a this this. Uh, mathematic... That's what I mean. Like at that point, it's not even nostalgia. I'm like pop culture is just a forever thing. You just keep adding to it. Right. Like pop culture, you're in the lexicon at this point. Like right. it's just people are like they just keep making Ninja Turtles movie. It's in the lexicon. Well, this this goes back to what our original point was about those no movies in the but 1940s people hate on everything. and 1950s. Yeah. The movies, especially horror movies. They weren't characters. They weren't characters that developed. You had a hero character. You had love interest character. You had mad scientist yeah. or 
the the scientist also a lot of the story father of the love interest yes but uh, it's true it's, always, it's like always yeah, that the father of the love interest always played like a big role frankenstein is always the the the, the, the father. like why is the dad character the dad of the fucking uh, i think in usually fucking he's, wolfman in a lot of the times he's the the main scientist the hero is just like that's that kind like, of i'm comes. a i was a student for your father and that's where we met and blah, blah, blah. like they and 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 there's like this fucking thing that doesn't happen in real life but for them it was easy to tie all the characters together and why they would care about each other yeah 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 you know now it's like well it's uh, also the the idea the sto- the ideas they had for stories were still fresh and very new back then so you can get away with a lot of basic shit well, to be honest Jurassic a lot Park, of basic shit like you threw together a bunch of characters that didn't know each other yeah that's yeah and 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 that was okay, but back then they wouldn't do that. No, they all had like like the, all the fucking military guys all knew each other, whether they were part of the Coast Guard and the Army. It's like this, that, that. It's the, you know we shouldn't have done that atomic test because it woke up that giant uh, lizard in yeah. the, <laughs> that was under the Arctic, and you, you know like it yeah. was always that. Uh, Lee Marvin, no Lee Van Cleef. Yeah, his first role was fuck i cannot remember but it's this type of movie and he plays the rifleman the the the, the sharpshooter yeah that like they get a bomb up near the thing's face and he shoots it and blows it up yeah of course i'm going to leave lee marvin it's lee van cleef lee van cleef oh and there he is there's, lee van cleef's in lee the marvin, lee marvin drunk as fuck i love but it I, I love it because lee van cleef is standing right behind dude lee marvin lee would, marvin would, would lee marvin was the most brilliant alcoholic actor of all time and that other guy fuck i can't remember his name but he's in like every one of those cowboys dude he's sloshed look at him fucking what the hell is going Mar- on here i just saw the i just saw lee marvin one where he plays a director and they're on a boat yeah and it's like a murder mystery kind of thing yeah uh fuck a very young and very hot lee marvin no um <laughs> like lee marvin very young very name. hot diane cannon very young very hot jesus Fucking christ Diane, yeah lee van Cleef first movie ever i don't know uh you'd have to go lee van Cleef. where is this yeah, those are, those are the 90s. Yeah, yeah. you have to go all the way back. Go all the way so, down there, Chris. I think it's like in the 50s. The Range Rider. High Noon. So there's High Noon. Untamed Frontier, Sky King, Kansas City Confidential, The Lawless Bread, White Lightning, The Beast from 20,000 Phantoms. That's, it. That's what it... I That's fucking it. have seen that yes. movie. I used to have that on tape. You don't... You would never <laughs> I used to have even that on rec- tape. He's got like a fucking... This, this suit on with like... Like you could barely see his face, you wouldn't even know that it's. I'm him. sure. Except I watched it on Svenguli, and Svenguli was like, "That's Lee, Lee, Van Lee, Lee Van Cleef." Yeah. And I was like, "Holy shit! It is fucking Lee Van Cleef." Uh, Clint Eastwood's first role, on screen role, was in uh, *Revenge of the Creature*, the sequel oh, okay. to *Creature from the Black*. Yeah, he plays a, a lab assistant that loses a mouse. Bring that up. <laughs> well, bring, yeah, see if I'm right playing, on that. He's uh, playing the League of, put a bring, bring, from twenty thousand. Dude, this movie fucking wait. Don't leave, leave this. This movie kicked ass though. Like no, this was so. A, but this was the one where the the scientist. Yeah, this is like one of the atomic age. The whole the beginning of this. Yes. I remember this trailer. I used to have this fucking videotape when I was a kid, and it was just trailers. It was called Fantastic Dinosaurs of the Movies, and I would just watch it, and I would just be like, "This is great," because I was just fucking just watch trailers. But I remember this, and then I bought. I would go buy these movies that I saw in the trailers. And like the two military guys are from different services. There's like they're, yeah, per- they're all like best friends. And a captain and they're like, oh, so how how's it? How you doing, Greg? Smoking a cigarette. Yeah. Uh, they're both smoking a cigarette? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it's good to see you the other day coming over to fuck my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? It's like you, nobody had to stop at 7 Eleven to get cigarettes on the on their way anywhere because somebody had a huge box of fucking cigarettes. Ah, different time. Sitting on a desk, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, you always you always There's, walk in and none of those old movies, you always walk into some dude's office and he's just got like a fucking decanter of cigarettes. I'm seeing if if in the trailer they don't have Lee Van Cleef. Like, no, they don't. From gonna, dis- no, from a distance. Is that Lee Van Cleef? Him, no, no, he's in he's got like a radioactive suit, suit on. But he still got the credit towards the end. No, I, I, absolutely. The Beast from 20,000 Phantoms. And I love spaghetti westerns. I do too. Cuz they're all samurai movies. Yeah, they are. Uh was it fucking uh Fistful of Dollars? Is uh Yo Jimbo. Yep. Your... Fucking unbel- and Last Man Standing. That's uh, um, what, no, well, that's let, Bruce Willis. But that's also that's a, that's fucking, also Fistful of Dollars, which is also your Jimbo. Like, and I love hi, we're doing the that. fucking cinephile episode. Yeah. <laughs> this is fun. I see. I keep. I'm keeping an eye out just because. That's there him. it is. There he is. Yep. 
That was him. Wow, look at that pompadour. Holy shit. Yeah. Young, sexy. He's Lee Van so Cleef. young in that. I think they filmed... They this is a Ray Harryhausen shit. Yes, yes. Which, uh, there's a great documentary about him on Amazon. If you ever uh, get a chance, check it out. It's fucking great. Uh, I yeah, love I movies. <laughs> I was, love I, movies so I much. I was like five, and I ran out of uh, Clash of the Titans because I was scared shitless. Because of the Kraken? Of the, or the Medusa. Was Medusa. Yeah, that, a lot of kids were scared of Medusa. Me. I ran I loved out of that the movie. theater. Loved that movie. Uh, now we're just going into fucking. This is just uh, what is this? Best little whorehouse in Texas. Probably. No, it's Lucy. That's fucking Lucille Ball. Yeah. Oh, oh my probably god. Probably just like an appearance. No, nah, but it's after her face melted. So. <laughs> I know. I'd, I'd, I'd bang her now. <laughs> She's fucking hot. Um. <laughs> did you not know it was happening? Did you not know this was just playing? No, it's not on my screen. Is this in? The, is this the sequel to Beast from Twenty Thousand Phantoms? Fathoms. Fathoms? Fan- Fathoms like a motherfucker. Any- yeah, now we're back. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. But anyway. That was a nice romp down that. that that's what we were talking about right before the fuck. Yeah, that was a good 15 that's minutes. That's the finish of the, that conversation. Yeah. Well, I mean, we love movies. We're little cinephiles here, so. True. And I've, I've one of my favorite conversations I have with people is like, that's like... Uh, like one of those things that you perk up in conversation. Like when yeah. I'm trying to get to know somebody, all of a sudden someone talks about film, and I'm like, "Oh, you know, you know, fucking samurai well, it's, movies." It's like, well, it's like me. It's like music. Music is the music same too. Thing. Music is a big. Uh, because I, and see, I have a whole thing where I talk about like how in your act when you no like in just, just in your life, life where music when you're young when you're like in your teens you're having a hard time defining who you are in the world. So music is an incredible shorthand to help you define yourself. Yeah. A lot so, of people identify themselves by... That's why people write lyrics on their Facebook or on their walls and shit like that. And, because and it never goes away because out. It's, it becomes such a core part of Yeah, who you, you identify are. with uh, not just a song, but a lyric in a song. No, that's me. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm just seeing if it, if it was at him. Um, but, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you're right, though. That's very much... Uh, and movies then become... Because songs are so short. Yeah, the movies are... A movie becomes like more of like a... Because being a Quentin Tarantino fan, back in the day when Tarantino was first making his shit... I love those movies. True Romance, I saw it in the theater. Still That fucking... was the year I graduated high school that came out, so I, I can see that film being very influential on you. <laughs> Big time. Dude, and, and I remember when they were making Pulp Fiction and they did an interview with Quentin Tarantino in, and they went around L.A. It was like on 60 Minutes or some shit like that. But they walked around L.A. with him... And Went like, to the video store. The I've video seen that store interview. where he yeah. went, it, 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 and I was like, "This is young Tarantino too." And I was so like, "This guy's amazing." And my parents are like, "Who is this?" And I'm like, "Reservoir Dogs." It's a movie that you know, True Romance. He wrote True yeah, Romance. Reservoir, Reservoir Dogs, Dogs is very under the radar, but it made buzz. That was the whole thing. And they were like, "Oh, we never saw that." Because I used to Blockbuster was around the corner, so I would walk, on a Friday or Saturday night, I would walk. Over You'd have a mom and pop video. Uh, well, th- we did. But the closest video store was Blockbuster. Oh, okay. When it first came out. Uh, well, oh, like early Blockbuster. And I had to walk. And it, actually, it, 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 the history of me smoking figures prominently is I went and I rented Rebel Without a Cause, watched it. And you I'm queef. Like, <laughs> you fucking guy. I was 15, 14, 14 years old. And I was like, I want to fucking be this guy. So I, what I would do is I would, I would walk up, I would rent the movies, I would walk back home. I would. I would then watch them, and then I would immediately walk back and drop them off. Sometimes get another movie, but I would have to walk past 7-Eleven each time. Yeah. And so on the way back from dropping off Rebel Without a Cause, I stopped and bought a pack of Lucky Strikes. Because who's going to cart a 14-year-old who's buying a pack of Lucky Strikes? I'm obviously getting this from my I mess my hair up, you know. I put lifts in my shoes. (laughs) I, Lord, my voice. Hey, how you doing? And, but <laughs> Just I, pack of smokes, please. I fucking I, I I I picked up this pack of cigarettes, and I had already tried smoking, and I was like, uh, you know, I could I, I could take it or leave it, but I was like. Oh, this is fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah. And and, and I, would, I just like filter lists the whole fucking nine yards. But it was uh actually you say Reservoir Dogs. It was, it was like Michael Madsen for me. It was just like the coolest dude. And that was a cycle, but like the way he smoked in that movie it was so fucking cool. And then Tim Roth, 
I ended up seeing Tim Roth because I, t- I was an AP lit and we did Hamlet. And right after we did Hamlet, we did Tom Stoppard's play. Rose, Rose and Krantz and Gilden Stern are dead. dead. Yeah, I, and then we watched the movie. Which is great. And Which is Gary Oldman yep. and, uh, and Tim Roth. Which pe- like that came first, out. It's like both of their yeah, first movies. Yeah, it's their movies. first fucking movie. They were theater guys before that. Right. They were all, like all those guys from that right, right up until that. I think they them, did a run of the play and they took that version and that's what the... I think they... I don't know if it was new. I'd have to. I don't remember. Which, but by I, the way, brilliant. Oh, great! Because like, and and here's the thing. Like, I got to watch it in an academic situation where you get to break it down and discuss all of the things. I've that done are that. Yeah, I've done stuff. And like having that. an adult teacher guide you through it, it's phenomenal because of what it deals with. It deals well, it's with a, it's, what characters do when they're not on stage. Yeah, which is a concept that I'm like. It's they've revisited it. There's a actually a version of. This is going to sound so nerdy, but I used to do theater. There's a version of Henry V that's called... I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's basically from the perspective of the soldiers. So it's it's all oh, okay. it's it's all about Pistol and, and Bardolph and all those guys. Right. I can't remember the fucking name of it, but it's... it's it's it um up. Oh, St. Crispin's Day, it's actually called. Oh, okay. It's actually called... And, like, I've Henry's never... a character in it, but only when he interacts with the soldiers. So the whole thing is... And that's the only other... I mean, I'm sure it exists otherwise, but that's the only other time I've ever really seen it done in the way they did it. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead because well, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead do it really kind of surreal at certain points fucking... they treat it like a play but and, you but... see the action happening and with what's his name the... yeah like they'll be talking to each other and they you can see off in the distance what the play what's happening in hamlet is happening over there and there's just like so much action and, and they're, all, they're in the front they're always very calm and everything until they get caught up in what the hell yeah it's the, the it's the original yeah then that concept has been revisited of taking two characters who are out of place and putting them in situations that are very well, yeah and and to get it back to samurai Uncomfortable movies for the, rather, yeah of to hidden, back, to back to what i'm sorry yeah samurai movies yeah. hidden fortress that's the Star Wars one. That's what the, the one that supposedly Star Wars was all inspired. Basically, is oh my god! Watch even just the first fifteen minutes of the I've seen it movie. before. I'm just trying to remember the lineage of and it. Yeah, because, and it, re, but because what it has to do with is is it's telling the story from the two the, smallest characters' perspectives, C three PO and R two D two. Yes. In this case, it's these two guys who were just peon soldiers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but those are your, those are your Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. But they yeah. have the exact same fucking interaction. But feudal Japan, yeah. as C three PO and and R two D two have, yes. and they split up the part where they split up when they land on Tatooine and everything. Yeah, they have the fight, and he kicks him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, this is ex- like I got angry when I saw it because I was a big Star Wars guy. That was actually the un- the beginning of my. You undoing. got angry? Why? <laughs> because it was. The ins- I felt violated that here was this. Like you thought it was an original concept, so and then you original. found out that it wasn't an but original. When, con- and even George Lucas, but, did, but, the version I have, I own, it wasn't. George Lucas was doing the fuck, did the intro, and he goes, "I uh, I borrowed some from this," and I'm like, "Heard the whole movie, you fucking piece of shit!" Like he, I got so angry. He, and here's the thing, I I shit on Star Wars a lot, and that's not gonna and, and that's not gonna stop me from continuing to do it now. But I will say this: um, the the that movie wasn't just that. There was a lot of stuff. That they were doing, and I said this before about how lower budget movies, they just, a lot of those sci-fi films, bef- like right before Star Wars came out, the sci-fi film was a low, well, low genre, they were all, man. They were low budget. Was, they didn't make high budget it was, stuff. It sci-fi had to be was, Kubrick. It was Kubrick. That was, was the only time it was high budget. Sci-fi was an offshoot of horror movies. Yes, it was considered, and now it's like a really respectable genre. Right. But and at horror the time, movies are, got shit, you know, it, it's, it's a It's getting turn. more, ever since Hereditary yeah. came out. But again, I even make the argument that like, but... Because, you know, Silence of the Lamps. Everybody's like, it's a horror movie. I'm like, it is, but it's also basically a thriller. And you always see when movies like that get nominated, they never call them horror movies. They're always like, it's you know, thriller. psychological yeah. thriller is yeah. what they like to call them. Yes. And I'm like, yeah, it's a psychological thriller at that point when you saw the fucking ghost cut that lady's head off. Like, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I mean, Hereditary is a brilliant fi- film, but like, it's got more, it's got so much gore in it. You know what I was thinking today is I'm like, uh, I said to my daughters, I'm like, I wonder if this is the year I'm going to let you guys watch Spider Baby since we're in October. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Spider Baby? Spider Baby's phenomenal. Like, I love that fucking movie so much because it's just ridiculous. It is ridiculous. That it's it, so ridiculous. It, it, can't, it can't, to me, it can't be scary. No. But, well, like, culturally, it's like. You have to look at, like, what some of the, like, you know who Larry Cohen is? I've heard the name. Larry Cohen did a lot. He was a director. He did a lot of, um, 
he did a lot of like uh, several genre films and everything, but he was like a dude that could just write. Like it was, but he always had the concept was always like sound like behind it and everything like right. that. But he would go. He did this movie called Cue the Winged Serpent, right? And the way he had stop motion, he's at one, like at one point. This is supposed to be in New York City, and the, the, basically they found out there's like a fucking dinosaur egg in, in like the Sears Tower, and like and this is well, kind of Chicago. A, no, or not Sears, uh, uh, Empire State Building. I'm sorry. Whatever. <laughs> sorry. I'm on a roll. Let My me go. Bra- I, I'm kidding. I couldn't. <laughs> like no, Animal House? It's like too much of a fuck. <laughs> was this, what's well, it's it? the Ferris Bueller today. No, it's no, the, the Bluto <laughs> thing when he's like, Germans? Let him go. Yeah, he's yeah, on a yeah, roll. Just, <laughs> he's on a roll. Um... But he's uh, but he they the whole point like they're supposed to like shoot out the the top of like the Empire State Building and like just so right. he goes yeah we'll go up there and get the shots so he just goes up there and does it it doesn't get the permit so he's just shooting he's like go up there and shoot he's, it's you know it's blanks he's just shooting into the air but like all the rounds are falling down and, everything, and people just see so he's like communicating with them and like the police are called he's like cops are here we have to uh, we have to yeah I'll see you in a little bit get down here like. Yeah. But they got the shot, and that's the shot that's in the movie. It's always crazy to me, you know? Right. But, like, guys like that would do, like, genre pieces, and they would do, um, they would, they, would, the, they would have this sort of, like, there was a point to the story. They were satirizing something. There was, it was about environmental pollution, or it was about um, uh, consumerism. There's a movie called The Stuff that Larry Cohen did, where it's all about okay. consumerism, you know? But it's also about this killer yogurt that eats people. You know what I mean? Right. But it's sort of, like... There, that's what you I, I think best the really good like horror movies and what I, I think a lot of people forget about horror movies is they're, ha- they're usually some sort of a sat- satire in some way right and that's what I think people are like, I want it to be really scary I'm like there's you know all, obviously yes too but there's there should there's the best ones always have some kind of kind of point behind it you know what I mean right it can be sometimes they're heavy handed and dumb well that, that but when it's done well risk. it's done you know what I mean well that's why people like Wes Craven and fucking John Carpenter like these guys are take a small concept. Fucking amazing because Russ Craven may have been the best to do that, it. And and I you mean, look at his, his body of work, Jesus his, Christ! And his family, the people that he trained to go out and make regular films, yeah, is amazing. Yeah, his tree, like a coaching tree. Yeah, he was such modern. a good director. And, the, and he hired all these guys like straight out of. Film yeah, he was. He was like uh, he was doing such low budget fucking. And now he was. I mean. It, it's revered, you know what I yeah. mean? And some of this stuff's dated. Like, I definitely don't... Like, I still enjoy Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't get scared by it anymore. Right. But there's there's always that... I always acknowledge. I'm like, usually when I show that to somebody for the first time, and they've never, like, seen it, which there's people out there that exist like that. <laughs> Spit take. Yeah. You mean you've never seen it's it? Danny go, who's never seen you've it? You've never... I hate those you people. You tell me their fucking name right now. I hate those people. I used to be one of those guys when I was, like, 18. Same. That's But that's... That's why I say, like, you define yourself by these things. It's, yeah. It's cultural shorthand to define who you are. And if somebody fucking violates that... I was talking about this with literally with Brendan. It's like... It, this shouldn't... Like, it's always weird when you meet somebody that something is their whole identity. Yeah, I'm I'm impressed by it. Really? Because I'm sometimes not, it's a little it's off putting for me it, sometimes. It is, but it's so it seems so easy to exist. Yeah, you know I know. What I'm saying? Like they know they're what just they're comfortable. They like, wake that's up who and I am. Go, I'm a Lego guy. I'm going to ACDC tonight. Yeah, you <laughs> follow around ACDC. It's like that's what I do. The like, dead. I love the dead. Yeah. So I smoke weed and I wear clothes that make me look like I like the dead. Like I would love that. I I to, 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 like I'm. Constantly struggling with wardrobe fucking. <laughs> I wish I had a choices. look. Yeah. You know, I need a look. I'm Andy ca- needs a look. <laughs> I'm carrying the same look I did in fucking high school. Oh, whatever. So am I, kind of. So. Just a better shirt, I guess. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is yeah. a new shirt. This it's is like, good quality. I got stuff. this at Hot Topic. I've, I've gotten, I still buy shirts at Hot Topic every once in a while. I see, I just walk by and I see it. I'm like, ah, don't go in there. They're going to they're gonna point at you and make fun of you as you walk out. You know they're going to. <laughs> That, Go well, the see, wrestling shirt, please. I like to walk That's in. That's why I buy everything online now. I walk in with my daughters, who are 10 and 8, and I love it because all these teenagers and young adults who think they're so fucking cool, <laughs> there's a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old buying the same shit. So, how cool are you? Now, my kids, I do think my kids are pretty fucking cool and fashion forward and all this other stuff. Yeah, yeah. But... Dude, like you're are you gonna you gonna make fun of me? Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Cause look at this. This kid's ten years younger than you. And and, and she's fucking buying the same shit you're fucking wearing. So, <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean but usually hot to- the hot topic people, I think 
I might vibe that I'm like old school. I would have been somebody if I was young now. I would have been in the same kind of scene and whatnot because yeah. they're always usually very fucking cool to me. Really, the cock yeah. topic people? Yeah, they're always like, "Oh, the old guy's back here. We should be nice to he's him." He's got a mustache. Why are we making them old? Oh, the old guy's back. Let's. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh my god. Um, well, whenever I talk about my daughters in the future, I'm always like, "Dad, why are you talking like that?" Like that's my. That sounds like the fucking big mouth character. Oh really? I've yeah, this. You should. It's a great show. You should watch it. Yeah. Uh, you were just on the. Uh, we just did uh, Pennsylvania. We did a little road yeah, together. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Now we did. Yeah. But uh, that was fucking great. I had a fucking fantastic. You time. have a good time. What was? was it, <laughs> what was it like? You know, because you were like, originally it was just you were like, I'm just coming to like record stuff. Well, that's I was I was I had you a were, plan. I actually had and a plan. And unfortunately, Fat J couldn't make it. Something some and family it was, stuff it was came primarily up. Primarily stuff that involved Fat yeah, J. Yeah, you're that, yeah. That, like everything that I had I had written. I still have. I mean, obviously, I still have it, and I would like to, to 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 film it. But it's so hard to get everybody in that situation. It was like, oh, this is perfect. Everybody's gonna be there. But then with Fat Jay couldn't make it, and so Terry let yeah. me do time, which was fucking fantastic and very nice of him. But yes, it of changed course. the focus of of everything. Yeah. And um, so I didn't get that. That was disappointing. But thanks for uh, getting me out of traffic on the way up. Well. This dude's a fucking, no wonder he was in the Air Force. He's sitting next to me like a goddamn, na- yeah, <laughs> a fucking navigator. Just uh, like, go down this road right now. right now. Yeah. Like, eyes that's closed, your superpower? Just, that's right, that's it? Like, You're just... No, 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 next block. Now. I, I can only <laughs> tell you when traffic is happening, but, oh, you see, man? Now it's Fat J. Oh, my God. So this is probably something to do with McGuire's. Do you need to get off right now? Let me... Uh, we're going to take a short break, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're back. Sorry. We had to, to take a phone call. And he's going down to McGuire's tonight, and they were just uh, Fat Jay and Everybody's Billy and them were just, in on me. just making sure he's coming down there. Um, so, and if you are listening to this and uh, you happen to see any of our faces on a poster for McGuire's, come on down and check out that show. Um, what were we talking about before? Oh, you were on the road with us and everything, yes, and you were just and, saying... And so disappointed that Fat Jay wasn't there, but... Yeah, I, that was a big. I would like to say that was a big. I had a great time, but we were definitely missing Fat Jack. But this, is, but this is our clique too. Like, uh, like yeah, it is our little group. The, the, like there are cliques, and but it's about how we all interact with each other. And I think Long Island is very good. No. There are there people that you don't get along, of course, but these are the people you guys are, who I feel close, absolutely closest to. I feel like it, I've known you guys forever. Yeah, because you were one of the first. You were one of the first people I met. Right. And it was like you, Mike Fails brought me in. Right. Like said, hey, try this. I well, met we, John. I'd only been in for about, a, I'd only. Did we start around for, the same around time? Around the same time. I'd only been doing it for like two or three months. Okay. Uh, at that point. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'd been doing it for a few, like six months. Because I was there for one of the early Dracula things. Like yeah, when well, you were Dracula still figuring it out. It was the second year I did comedy. Uh, was Dracula? Yeah, thing. but I remember you see, being at a show and seeing you walk up with like the cape flowing in the wind and being well, like, "What's were, happening tonight?" That was that that fucking the level of comfort that I would have when I would walk up and see you and Fails out in front of fucking Barton's. Uh, uh, Barton's. Clyde's. At the time, Barton's was Clyde's. Now it's called Royals. That um. Oh. <laughs> but uh. <laughs> What's that? Nothing. It was my cousin. Oh. The, uh, <laughs> I just I turned it into something else. Okay, but you, it was so comforting to see you in fails, uh, and and it, Billy and I struck up a friendship, and we were one of our earliest things that we talked about was he and I wanted to do a podcast because what as soon as we he and I met, we are riffing. Yeah. Was off the fucking charts. He's one of the best guests I can get on this show. And it's hilarious because he's he, just, but he's like he's got this like ener- like warm energy about him where you just like it like whenever he comes in here and like I've told him a million times he's coming he's like I don't know what I'm gonna say and then he sits down and he just starts talking and it's it's just great. Well, he like he always likes to say like wow I wish I was better at riffing. And I'm like, you riff all the time. <laughs> we're always riff. We're always like going down these horrible. I say that too for the record, path. and then I like think about it. I'm like, no, you know, like, but like, I think about. It, I'm like, I riffed with Andy in the car. I riffed, you know, just yeah. It's you have to acknowledge when you're doing it. Like, I, I, I need to start remembering some of those riffs. Like riffing is something that has been, a, like, who I am at, like, not just as a comedian, but like who I am, my personality. Since I was a kid, 
And so, like, and then I went, I was improv. Uh, like, I did the fucking uh, UCB for a while. And was yeah, very, that's right. You did UCB. You told me that in the car serious, ride, actually. Yeah. I'm very serious about that. Uh, so. Well, you told me in the car ride, and I. You know, you know, why when I come when when I when we have more time, I'm gonna actually you can tell your whole story. But you were doing a little, you have a little bit of acting experience, right. a little bit of acting background from your life, and that was primary until I got home from the Air Force, and I was yeah. like, I got into UCB, and it was, a, but so riffing, yeah, that is improv, yeah, of course it is. So it, it, it to me, it is a very natural place for me. I, I tend to go there in every social situation. You're always yes ending. I love you guys because. Mm. I love you guys too. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys are fucking like way up there. Like that's why it it drives me nuts when Billy says, "Oh, I'm not very good at riffing." I'm like, shut the fuck up. What he doesn't like is when things get like really frantic when there's like a group group of us. I, I love that when everything goes back and forth. But but, but he, he his tendency is it's like a hacky sack circle of fuck of, of fucking dick jokes, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know. And it's funny because, like, there's, you know, there's different theories as to whether people are trying to one-up each other and whatever. But I, I don't think, think it's it always is. part of that. I think, I think that's there's... because, you know, if somebody says something funny, then you're, it's like you want to say something either just as funny or funnier. And it, it's almost like you don't mean to be, like, competitive, but I think it's the nature. It's just got a competitive well, na- That's what well, it is. That's what riffing it's, is. It's to, it's, to, it's to, we're creating something together. And Rob like, White had a great one. We were yeah. hanging out after the mic one night when he was just like, I remember her. She was uh, like a Christmas tree, pretty, but not too bright. And I'm like, that's <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> well, the, one of my favorites that like I explain, I, sh- I point to whenever Billy says that he's not good at riffing, I'm like, what about the time we were talking about reenactors? And we were talking about like all these people doing like different reenactings and then started getting ridiculous. Civil War reenactors, Revolutionary War reenactors. Yeah. What's it going to be like for Afghanistan reenactors? Kuwait we are at reenactors are weird. Like, like, like all of this. Like yeah. how crazy <laughs> is. And you guys all <laughs> playing. Gotta re- this has got to keep going, right? Do they go to Iraq and be like, we're going to just reenact this on the hill? <laughs> like, what the right. fuck? So you guys War are the, reenactors are so weird. So you guys are the ragheads oh and we're gosh. the good guys. You know what because no, no, it's just how for psychotic. It's right? just for it's just for entertainment. We're just celebrating. But how psychotic people get? Yeah, with can that you go shit? to Germany and like reenact Normandy Beach? Is that is that happening? Well, France. But the sorry, I'm, I'm. Can you go to France? I'm not good at this. That's okay. <laughs> Discovering can Chris, make, can you oh, look this gonna... up? Are there, uh, they, they reenact? Do they reenact the storming of Normandy Beach or reenact uh, Auschwitz being Cause there are, uh, well, <laughs> liberated? No, could you imagine? Did they reenact that? I don't know. But That'd be it, crazy if they did that. But see, everybody went nuts, and then you guys all started moving on, and Billy just kept talking to me, and Billy got to 9-11 reenactors. Oh, my Lord. Yes? They do it? <laughs> he said, oh, my Lord. What happened? And the two of us are like, what? I'm sorry, what? Are they like... Are you okay? Are they killing babies on the beach? <laughs> are, they like doing, are they doing something fucked up? But are they like, doing it naked? Are but, they having sex while doing it? Billy said something about 9-11 reenactors, and I and, and I go, get back in there and fucking tell them. <laughs> I said, you were telling them, because that's the best one. <laughs> that's the best one. It's horrible. Where do you stop? Where does it, where does right, it stop? Right, exactly, but it's so ridiculous. Like, that's how ridiculous... Well, that's comedy. This concept is, right. Yeah, and, that's comedy. And, and that's I know what, that much. That's what I love. That's it. funny as shit. And if, if, I, fe- if I, I feel like... D-Day, things, what is this? Oh shit! Connecticut, D Day Cano, Cano, Ohio. Uh-oh. There's one in Ohio. So this is the, wait they reenact the storming of Normandy, but in Ohio, like what Lake Erie? Who's lining up to play Nazis? Seriously, like because you right need, outside of Cleveland. I know a person <laughs> that does this like war reenacting stuff. Uh, wow, insane! What's your thought on like 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 actual war reenactors? So. I'm technically like I have service ribbons that have me in certain conflicts, but I was nowhere near the conflict. Okay. Because of Air Force and I was in air- aircraft maintenance. So I was in a hangar somewhere. Basically, the rear with the gear where I should be. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> smoking uh, cigarettes, quoting movies. <laughs> yeah. And, and like when po- I actually, when I was in Kuwait and it was right after 9 11 and we were flying me- missions from Kuwait to Afghanistan, they, my building had the debrief which is when they would land they would come 
They would drive them straight to debrief, and these guys would sit out and fill out uh, maintenance problems that they had. Yeah. And, and and log their flight time, and there would be an ops debriefer, a guy who would sit there and be like, "What did you see? You know, you're you have this voice note. What did that mean? You did this, and and they would come up with their big report. This is how you find out what happened out there. Yeah. But we, me and my buddy, fell be out there smoking cigarettes in front of this trailer. Yeah. But a, a, a line of Kuwaiti. Wait, what the hell? But a line of Kuwaiti F-18s right in front of us. And these guys would come and they'd be Chris, like... Chris, can we play this on the show? Yeah. Oh, oh it is? Uh, play, let me see this. Play this. What the, this is the D-Day. Cleveland, yeah. This is Cleveland. No shit, it's in Ohio. Yeah, they go out the Fuck, I was right. That was so stupid. D-Day, Kanye, commemorate. Already I'm out of it. There were no women in the military back then. Anyway. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, guys, I'm joking. Look at that fat fuck. Wait, go back. Go back. Oh, my no, God. No, no, no. I'm sure they'll show him again. Um, his wife is a native of Kanye, and he was walking on... What's up? Oh, God. <laughs> now it's like Gettysburg. Yeah, it's that, yeah they used to go and watch the out. war. That always weirded me out as a kid because I would go like we would went to the battlefield and stuff and there's like right. a, there's a painting of like a family like having like 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 like, like tea and crumpets and then there's just like blood like right like <laughs> well you know the uh this is a great fun fact uh the uh New Jersey Turnpike they name all of the uh rest stops after famous New Jerseyans it didn't Howard Stern have one or something like that yes but Molly Pitcher it's one of the better ones the yeah. Molly Pitcher <laughs> But that's what I mean. They're like, this looks like Normandy. And then I just saw like Nazi tanks roll in. Right. Like who's signing up to be like, right, everybody pick out of the hat. If, if you get a, if you get this color, uh, if you get this color ribbon, you're going to play a allied soldier. If you get this colored ribbon, you're playing a Nazi. <laughs> well, you know, that's the fucking thing is people have their preferences, right? <laughs> yeah. That's my point. Right. Who's signing up being like, I would love to be part of the Gestapo. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> like I have an incredible <laughs> the one guy shows, SS uniform. He just shows up. He's like, oh, is you don't have to give me a costume. I already have my own. Completely authentic. I've spent a lot of money and time <laughs> to put this motherfucker together. <laughs> and I'm going to fucking... I will uh, only accept the rank of general. Like, right. <laughs> I'm Lieutenant Fritz von Helstein. Oh, you got the one guy that shows up and he's just like, uh, I need a Hitler? Uh, I yeah. have... Yeah, like, <laughs> I have I have everything Hitler. Wouldn't that be funny if they were just showing the if they were like showing like the behind the scenes? They got guy just have Hitler at with, catering. <laughs> yeah, there's a Hitler holding a fucking tray of shit. Yeah. Like, like, it's just like this mac and cheese and everything. Can I get more? Uh, can I get more of the mashed potatoes? Yeah, it's a guy from Chicago. I, I, like, yeah, I didn't get enough of the mashed potatoes. Yeah, I didn't get enough well, of the mashed potatoes. The, the Great Lakes affect. Yeah, yeah. Just it doesn't there. doesn't have to be from Chicago. It could be from Cleveland or <laughs> both Buffalo. Oh or whatever. God. Yeah. Oh, there's oh man, that'd be so. Yep, dude, it's what I do every year, man. I fucking go there. And listen, all due respect, all Nazis. due respect to everybody that stormed Normandy Beach and and uh, actual World War II veterans and all that stuff. But like, no, this is some of this. This them. is a little. This is maddening. Like, it's not them. Th it's, those are Nazi tanks, aren't they? Yeah, those are Nazi tanks. Those are uh, Panzers. That dude has a like a very authentic uniform. Uh, um, a Pearl Harbor, but it hasn't been going well. <laughs> We haven't found the right. I was, we were vacationing and Tahiti, yeah. and I said, This harbor looks exactly <laughs> like Pearl Harbor. Free Japanese kamikazes sinking the fucking, what was it, the Iowa or whatever the fucking famous one was that? that yeah, that uh, yeah, the there? Iowa. Yeah, I think so. In, uh, yeah, or Indianapolis. Like the, yeah. Fucking, it was perfect. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's outside of here it's we are in strange... outside of Eureka, California. Yeah, yeah, it looks exactly like Pearl Harbor. So all we had to do was get a bunch of kids with their drones, and they just crash them into. Oh my god! <laughs> just horribly fucking. No, no, we only make sure that we use authentic <laughs> Japanese models. Zeros, <laughs> Japanese zeros. God. What is this? Horrible. Oh no! Is there's no, this is not a reenactment of Pearl Harbor, is oh, it? Oh good lord. Like Chris is reading our fucking minds and getting they shit are the reenactment me attacking Pearl Harbor on, in VR. I don't know if I want to have that kind of experience. Virtual reality, eh, pussies. <laughs> <laughs> get up there, oh, this fucking pussy ass shit. Well, who who get like like I'd like to be a That's Jap this year. So crazy. Day that will live in infamy. Wait, did they really just blow something up? 
Yeah, I bet you those were pre-fucking loaded. You don't think they got real napalm? I, I just don't think they dropped real bombs. I think they probably had shit set up. And as they passed, they set them up. It looks like it, yeah. It's just a, this is a crazy thing to reenact. Right. It's crazy to reenact anything. But war in general is a crazy thing to reenact. <laughs> Here, here's a Japanese zero. They're going to fucking have him dive bomb a fucking uh, a boat? No, they're just going to do a pass. Man, I can't wait to get complaints from veterans organizations about this episode. <laughs> no, I, I, like, listen, respect, man, respect to everybody, but this is kind of like... It's just weird. Insanity. A little morbid, too. Especially if you're doing it in virtual reality. What are they blowing up? Oh, I get it. It's not like a game. You're like, you're just watching the perspective. Okay, yeah. there's a camera on this thing. And all you have to do is do it once. Film it. Here you go. Nobody ever has to reenact ever again. Yeah, yeah, I know. Pause this, Chris. Uh, yeah, that's just... Where does it stop? Like, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, that's... And that's why it had got... We were... Ripping. Well, the Civil War reenactors. And, and That's a little... I guess that's a little different because I'm like... I could see, like, going to, like, a historical location... Well, and war fighting like, was like for a different. tourist thing, yeah. It was different. Well, warfare was extremely different back then. They used to go in the middle of the field and be like, do you surrender? Yeah. Was Alex Bradley's joke? It was just like, do you want to surrender? No. No. Well, I'll go back and tell the troops or whatever the fuck he yeah. does, yeah. Well, that's, that's the, you know, you watch the, 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 oh, let's walk to the middle of the battlefield and wait and see what happens. And well, then we're going to walk in a straight line. <laughs> it's been done before, and I don't know if Alex... At least be rules to like, war. Standing behind things and shooting, how that was like... That was how the Americans won the won revolution. The they just like was, shot was, them from behind. Guerrilla war tanks. Yeah, they were like, we don't have to play by these rules. Like, right. Well, that's because also the Americans had just fucking fought a war with the French and Indians. And they learned all those tricks. Right. So. <sighs> like how to scout people. Yeah. Watch uh, Mel Gibson's The Patriot. Wildly inaccurate. <laughs> yeah, but fun. But fun. Yeah. Fun. Uh, we were talking before I wanted to brief off time. I wanted to bring this up before we finish. Uh, yeah. you, uh, I'm a, is a, a October Halloween season. Like talk about spooky stuff. You and I have a shared love of true crime. That's true. Uh, did you watch the Jeffrey Dahmer show or so, at least some of it? So we, we, we were talking about it and I put it on and I started watching it in the first episode. I'm sure I'm not fucking ruining this for anybody, but the first episode is when he gets caught. Yeah. It starts at the end. He Tarantino's it. And, um, it hit me that I remember all of it. I remember this. Like when he got caught and everything. All of this. So so I've and, and all the documentaries throughout the years and whatnot. Several twelve. Like I don't need I don't and, and like reading books and, and and articles and shit and being like I don't think I actually need to watch this because I know what happens. I yeah. know what happened. It's weird to me because I'm like I, I used to I I I've been like addicted to true crime like i read about this shit when i was like fucking 20 and shit like that just like in like in college i would go to the library and i'd like just find like like a true crime book and i'd read about like all these fuckers and everything like that and i'm like oh and it just it's interesting to me it just is like see i, I and it's funny because the thing that struck me was first of all i love how sweaty they make everybody well it's ryan murphy isn't it uh, I, I don't even chris know. is it not the guy who makes american horror story can you look that up but they, they uh, like, everybody's super sweaty, which I guess. Because gays were really sweaty in the 80s. Like, yeah, that was like, like, like yeah, they, they, they make it. They do make it look like San Diego in the fucking like m in middle of the summer. Like, right. I don't know how hot Wisconsin gets. It's Ryan Murphy, no, it, right? It, can get, it gets like yeah. here in the summer, but like not for that long. Like, it just, uh, it, 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 but uh, what I. It, it is him, yeah, Dahmer, yeah. So if you watch American Horror Story, like it's 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 also like everybody's always sweaty in that too. Right. Well, my my approach is I always wanted to be a homicide detective when I was a kid. No shit. And so I come at the serial killer thing as like I wish that like I'm fascinated with how they found him, how they brought him down, how they made the case against them. Not just Dahmer, any the the, the whole. The, but, that but whole he, aspect is actually very fascinating. It's one of the things that I think is actually very interesting to me about it. That most people who are into true kind now, or, or because it is prevalent, so it's sort of like faddish serial killer point, culture, is that they're on. And I think it was like Dexter, which I thought was such a stupid fucking show. Yeah. Um, that that like people are on the side of the fucking serial killer. Yeah. 
that's the impression that I get. He said, and, I'm, yeah. and I'm like, okay, like I understand. There's sympathy to be had for like how they became like this. Yes. Like if you, and I'm talking like, Marginalization. Like someone like Jeffrey Dahmer did not have a chance. Right. The kid, like he had a very terrible upbringing, and like of course the time, but like it, it, it's there's a romantic side. They did it with the Ted Bundy thing a little bit. If you they remember did, the, the Zac, I actually liked the Zac Efron Ted Bundy, but there was, and I, I thought it was a trick. I don't know if it was a trick from the filmmaker to kind of make you kind of think well, that he wasn't to, as have, bad. But you and then there's to, that last shot the, of him. It's the main character. They're in almost every scene. You yeah. have to have some sort of affinity for them, but. People, I don't think people understand the level of depravity that most of these fucking people experience yeah. in their lives. Yeah, exactly. That it, it does not even remotely approach your, oh, people don't understand me, so I identify with Jeffrey Dahmer. I was rooting for him to kill... Like, Do no. people, have people really said that to you? <laughs> no, it's the impression that It's the I impression get. you get, okay. It's, it's like, it's like because uh, we do, we're... we're the, the modern era, everybody's very flippant with shit. It's true. And and like, oh, you know, I could kill somebody. <laughs> like, it's it's and it, it's like, all right, let's let's think about this fucking for real though. Like, your upbringing is however bad it was, does not fucking compare. You do not have the mental because you defense. didn't drill holes in fucking. You didn't go get drunk and then go pick up uh, the people at a gay bar and then drill holes in their heads right. and drip acid inside of it to keep a forever love slave. Like right. you're like you're like those. Are, you watch that movie. If you watch that show, like I watched like the first two episodes and like it's one of those things where I'm like, uh, you know, I have depression, I have anxiety. I sit back and I'm like, my life's not that bad. Like you know, but like it's, it's romanticized. And that's why I don't like the fictionalization of these. This things. they 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 seemed at least with this I felt. Felt like like the guy did a good job. The the so the the main guy who played Jeffrey Dahmer. Like, right. and I I saw what they were doing with it because like it, it, I don't know if the show is necessarily romanticizing him or but, if. But the director, the writer, and like the listen, director, I, the show's great. Everybody go check him... out the show. It's a really well made yeah, yeah. show. No, no, I'm no, not no, shitting. I'm not like dissecting or shitting on the show. But see, my, what, when it comes to true crime. I don't like. You get a little hipstery about it, though. Everybody's yeah, just like. Well, no, I think I've come to here to, to this. I don't think I'm like OG in any kind of sense. You're like, man, like I that. knew he was fucking jerking off in rib cages well, when I was back like, when I was 22. <laughs> see, that's the bothersome thing about Dahmer specifically is like I was an adult. I was a young. Do you remember when he was caught? When he was caught, yeah, yeah. And I remember being like fascinated and reading everything I possibly could mm -hmm. as it was coming out in real time. And and being like, holy shit, this guy was fucked up. Was, and but what I like, I prefer, he was a true monster. Like he my was. true crime thing is not a fucking Hollywood fucking romanticization of that. It, yeah. I prefer the documentaries, and they're making some fantastic. There's a really, there's a really good. Uh, yeah. If, if you get a chance, where I've is seen them Marta? All. I've seen it. <laughs> Don't they Wait. esta Marta? It takes place in Seville in No, Spain. I don't. I haven't seen that one. I'm sorry. And it's 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 Spanish language or whatever, but it's like shit like that watching that and they roll it out sort of cuz I don't, you figure I didn't the crime know what happened. Yeah, exactly. I, they I, explain I'm, it. I'm only too. learning it now. Yeah. But they bring you through it slowly, step by step how it was like for the parents of this girl who disappeared, like what it was like for them to each day deal with the fucking cops, deal with the fucking friends, deal yeah. with all the media. Yeah. I prefer that, like the real take from, from the ground, the people who loved the people who died. Yeah. I prefer that because that's the real thing. The serial killer is, is absolutely dog bites man. Yeah. Or man, man bites dog. It can be in. That's not normal. Yeah. I want to empathize with, because you're much more likely to lose somebody to a serial killer than you're a really cool serial killer who no, kills no other. No serial killer. I kill other serial killers. Yeah. That's my serial that's killing. That's the thing. No like, serial so killer. stupid. Yeah, no serial killer is a cool serial killer. But that's what... This, the, what was the guy that... I remember like this guy was caught. Uh, the, the BTK guy, right? Yeah, he's a twat. Like he's like a like like. If take the killing out, he's actually just an insufferable. He thinks these people think Jeffrey Dahmer was a monster caught inside of his own mind of, right. of, of of hate. But like most of these, he's like a depraved individual. But most of these people just suck. Well, the, the other they thing, all suck. The like, other thing that I that I don't like about the the movies that they make these true crime movies, not the documentaries, the, the based on a true story, um, based on a true story, <laughs> based on a true story. 
is that they um I like when they, they take the those elements and put them into a, a horror movie. Jackie, Jackie the Joke Man Martling, I, I got to interview, well, be with him a couple of times on the po- other podcast that I do. And he something he said, we were like, Jackie, you've had such a fucking incredible career. He's like, yeah, you know, you look back at it and it looks like I made all the right choices. But I got to be honest, all I was doing was just trying to live my life. Yeah. And it all just worked, you know, th- all these things worked out for me. And you're like... Right, that's everybody's life. So I prefer to look at things that way than to we're now back here and now everything's like super stylized. And that's why I say about the sweaty thing. Yeah, is like that's you're, Ryan Murphy. You're thing. adding these details. He makes a ri- like American to Horror make st- a riveting story. But it's also like he makes and he's like because American Horror Story is like very much like a part of gay culture and everything like that. Like it's oh, big. And yeah. I, he, I think he is gay too. So which, which and, and, so like there's a lot of sweaty men in his shows. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, but 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 there's a rem- it, it's part of the romanticization. Yeah, I am not say that. Right. No, no, I know, but but you're I, I you're you're right. The observation I think is correct because like I and I I just personally don't like it. Other I, I'm not going to tell other people not to fucking be into it, and they should stop making these. By all means, fucking do that. Yeah, do it. But my where I come down in true crime is I want these fuckers caught. I, I like I, it breaks my heart when they have these setbacks when you start going because I'm telling you, where is Marta? Is and maybe it's because at this point in my life with having daughters and whatnot, it, it is incredibly frightening, and and to 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 hear this story from Jump is just yeah. like, oh, this could happen to anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, like I've actually I've taken kind of a hiatus on some true crime stuff because it was getting a lot. It gets dark sometimes. Sometimes really you would, you because really you get out of fucking rabbit and all of a sudden you're just watching death over and over again. Right. And, I was and falling asleep to it for a while. Systematic failure after systematic failure because yes, the guy gets caught in the end, right? Yeah. But all of these, fu- the, the, but the journey to them getting caught is, yeah. is full of people being inept. People being fucking stupid. Yeah. People not making, giving a shit. Making too. mistakes. People. What's well, like the Jeffrey? Apathy. Jeffrey yeah, we were absolutely. talking about the Jeffrey Dahmer thing. It's just like, man, if you learn anything from that show, hey, Milwaukee did not like gay people. Right. Like, and, and the like, cops. All they had to do. All they had to do to get away was literally be like, oh, this is gay shit happening in here. So, it smells weird. Don't come in. Well, and, and that's like, uh, it, it. It also shows like what a difficult job being a cop is because you're going in with your prejudices. Uh huh. You, you know, like, oh, this is what we've always done, like that sort of fucking mindset. Yeah. And so, yeah, those same cops <coughs> who busted him had been They let in... the kid go that, that, that ran away. Right. And if those in the, there's two cops in that story, specifically two cops that were the cops that right. they uh, they had. I think they let when one of the kids ran, one of the kids, the kids, Asian, I mean, the kid, Asian kid, the little Asian kid yeah. that he was like 14 and he drilled got, like a hole in his head. Yeah. And he, but this, this happened and he ran out and they fucking found him. And like Bought Jeffrey Dahmer was just like, he's my boyfriend right. and everything's fine. Like we do, gay stuff. we do gay stuff. You don't want yeah. to see it. It's just and, like, and they fell into it, which yeah. is human fallibility, which is horrible. And they're cops and you wish that they wouldn't, but you understand this is the, that, that's the story. Yeah. I don't, and I think it gets fucking glazed over because everybody's like, "Oh, the guy who kills well, people." You watch. There's a documentary. I think it's called Jeff or just like Dahmer. It's like one of those things, and it's basically about that. It's about when he was caught, how he was caught. Right. Not so much the cop that interrogated him, was interviewed in it. It's just dude, this fucking hilarious dude uh, from it's like a, the most Midwest dude ever. He goes, so you know, I I, I went to Jeff and I said, uh, do you want some cigarettes? And he goes, you know, like whatever the fuck. Right. And he goes, I I went to my wife. I'm like, I'm the guy interviewing him. You know, like I'm, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> like, well, that's and that's what I'm saying. Like, you're more likely to be that guy or know that guy. Yeah, exactly. Than the serial killer. Yeah. Why are stop identifying with the fucking serial killer? Yeah, that's that's a that. There's something wrong, and I mean, there, are, is, there is something wrong. It's with our society. It is absolutely our society, and and like I'm, but I, I understand that it happens, and I'm not shitting on people that do it. I'm saying that, like, stop for a second, think about this shit. Yeah. Like you're you're not that. That's why I hate Dexter. That's why I hate Dexter so much. Is because I never watched a single episode. I refuse to watch it because, on principle, yeah. this is a fucking garbage, fucking idea. Yeah. It's kind of like um, what was Nip Talk? 
I refuse to watch fucking Nip Tuck. That you or me? That's me. <laughs> Gonna wrap up soon. Uh, this is Billy. Yeah. The um. But yeah. Nip Tuck. I remember that. Yeah. What was Nip that? Nip Tuck. I was like, uh, me and three twelve-year-olds could write every fucking script. That was just. Uh, My wife would watch it. It was almost porn. <laughs> it was. I, I had to say the. Did my the, buddy? There was uh, an episode where the dog had sex with the woman. Yeah, and I, her nipple dude, off. There was there was some stuff I that happened. Jerk in, off to there that. was something. There was stuff that happened in that show where I'm like, how have these people not killed themselves? Yeah, thank <laughs> you, Chris. <laughs> I heard what he said. We gotta wrap up. Um, Andy, anything you want to plug? Yeah. My ass. Hey. Oh, we'll Good be. night, everybody. Ah. Da, 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 da. Uh, um, nothing, com- nothing plugging coming up. I don't think I really have anything coming up specific. Pacific. Oh, the twenty eighth. Actually, October twenty eighth. I'm, I'm on know. that show it's too. In Huntington. Oh, you're on Come different to show. my social media. You'll see it. Uh, I'll be doing Dracula because it's Halloween oh, sweet. and everything. So uh, on the fourteenth, I'm doing uh, the Suffolk Comedy Con- Aragon's Comedy Contest. Come down and support. Uh, Red Zone Bar and Grill. That's on the fourteenth. Uh, and then I'm also doing uh, after that. I'll no, be fifteenth, right? Fifteenth. Yeah. Yeah, it's the fifteenth. Sorry, the fifteenth. That's Red Zone. Uh, check my social media pages. I'll be posting about that uh, all week. Um, and then I have uh, October twenty eighth. I'm also doing a show, but I'll be at McGuire's. It's a great lineup. Tony Landolfi's on that lineup. Uh, Billy's on that lineup. Billy Geyer. Go see that. That's, yeah. That's a Terry's headlining. Uh, Joe Cravel is on that. Joe's fucking hilarious. Oh, fucking love Joe. Joe's Joe. fucking really funny. Go check him out. I got to have him on the show soon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just like thin. He's. I love him. Hey, I sound like. I just love when people fucking make fun of him for being thin. Yeah. And he's like, oh, that's real funny. I never fucking heard that before. Like, ha ha. Ha ha. <laughs> Why is he so like... non plus? Yeah, no, like he's so. Like... Um, and then I'm having, I think that's it for this month. Uh, so right next month I'll, I'll give you the other plugs. Um, Andy, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, Joe. Hey yeah, man. Cool. I always love having always you on. Good time. All right. Well, I'll definitely have you back on again. Uh, take care of yourselves guys. Uh, remember to, uh, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, follow me on Instagram at that Winchell kid 87. Uh, find Andy L I was it N Y R O X Long Island New York rocks. Yeah, uh, we post all of our stuff on there, further shows and everything like that, and Drive funny cast, stuff take too. Chances. All right, good night, everybody. The credits are rolling over this right now. <laughs> 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 <laughs>